what is a carbon market and why does it even exist? Climate change is, let's start with that, is caused because of uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gases. Anthropogenic meaning made by mankind, okay. by us, through our industrial revolution and industries, give out six gases that have a destructive effect okay. in the atmosphere through the enhanced greening, green, uh, greenhouse uh, warming effect. Yeah. The greenhouse effect is known to everybody, we all learn it in school, but this time, because we're trapped in, in this layer, the effect of warming is enhanced. Yes. And that is basically global warming and therefore climate change. Now, it is caused by three, by six gases that have a certain uh, global warming potential in scientific terms. And when people talk about CO2, it is the, the biggest, the most rampant, but in fact, it is carbon dioxide equivalent. equivalent yeah. So those six gases are then converted into a carbon dioxide equivalent, meaning the global warming potential is expressed in carbon dioxide equivalents. That's the way to normalize something for comparison's sake. Got it. So when we talk about carbon, carbon emissions, what we really mean are carbon dioxide emissions or carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. So if it is methane, which is a greenhouse gas with a high global warming potential, it can still be expressed, it is usually expressed expressed as carbon dioxide equivalent. equivalent. Okay. So that's what. Now, too much of these gases going up into the atmosphere is what's been causing climate change, global warming and climate change. What are the other sort of climate change? What happens to climatic conditions? A whole lot of things. Um, sea lines are receding, weather patterns are uh, getting more damaging, cyclones and other such weather, weather events are getting more common, more frequent, damage is getting higher, economic damage is getting higher and higher. Because of climate change, some areas are drying up faster. So depending on where on the planet you sit, which part of the earth you um, occupy, the effect is different. Yes. Now, for us in India, we have several effects because we're such a large subcontinent. The effect of climate change is happening across the world in different, different pockets at different levels of magnitude. So what is climate? This is the whole business of climate change. Now, this business of carbon market is what? Is that we have allowed as a society, as humankind, allowed the emission of these gases because fundamentally these a lot of these emissions come from industrial growth. Yes. They come from power generation. We need power to run our industry. We need power to keep our lights on. And so all countries as they develop need this emis emissions. They need it. Okay. We don't have an alternative to it's a an output of, to the development that the countries It's an output. Are. It's a necessary output sure. to most development. Yes. So now this carbon market thing was a method by which we were able to incentivize people who did things, made investments and did things that are lower on greenhouse gases because our normal way of doing business was to emit. And energy, the energy system occupies about 60 to 65 percent of total emissions that cause climate change. And that is the business of burning fuels and okay. utilizing this energy. And 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago, what were we burning? We're burning coal. We're still burning coal. We're burning more renewables energy. And over time, we will be burning less coal. So today, this carbon market, not even today, it's 25 years old, is an incentive system to tell somebody, if you do something differently that reduces emissions, reduces away from a, some sort of a business as usual, or caps it. Countries have a cap. They say, yes. this is the maximum a country can emit. And that cap is then given to industry. And industry is told, this is the maximum you can emit. And steel, this is how much you can do. And cement, this is how much you can do. Yes. And then, but whatever you do, you can trade amongst yourselves. But we keep the limit the same. Okay. So in that limit, people who are doing things that are less emitting <clears throat> can sell the credits 
to those that are more emitting and it's okay because the total cap has remained the same. So this carbon market is nothing but a system of trading inside a closed system where um, you're essentially incentivizing somebody through money <coughs> to do things differently. You've told us about how an organization can generate a carbon credit, but we have seen there is a price attached to a carbon credit and it fluctuates a lot. Who sets this price? Is that a buyer, is that the seller or the intermediary which or the exchange that's being done? Okay. So prices in carbon markets are set are a function of the level of need for that carbon credit. Okay. The more somebody needs it, the higher they pay, they pay for it. That's just plain economics. So today's buyers for carbon credits are those that have needs from two different types of, or they have two different types of needs. One is compliance, their government has put a limit to how much they can emit. So they, in order to stay within that compliance, they undertake several activities inside their own, own factories or companies. And where they cannot undertake any more, many are allowed to buy a portion of carbon credits from uh, somewhere else outside. Okay. How much they pay for that little portion is a function of how urgently and how, how much they need that. Okay. <clears throat> because if they have reduced all the emissions back at home, they may never need to buy anything from outside. Yes. If they're unable to, maybe because there is no technology or maybe technology is just too expensive, Maybe it's easier for me to buy from outside. That's the economic rationale. So fundamentally, prices are set through the stringency of a cap. To get a little technical, a cap is the total amount of emissions that one can emit. emit yeah. And caps go down. In good systems, caps are reduced because the whole idea is to reduce the total amount of emissions in the atmosphere, carbon emissions in the atmosphere. So price is a function of that. Now, how do you discover that price? Okay. I could buy something from you bilaterally and one may never know yes. how much I paid for it. It's a clo it's a confidential contract and I don't need, I'm not obligated to reveal to anybody how much I paid for it. We have therefore things like exchanges. It's like in our power market because I have, I'm buying power from somebody on a power purchase agreement. The price is known within that power purchase agreement. Really nobody, it's nobody else's business. It's a, it's a, it's a bilateral transaction between two private entities. But you also have an exchange. What if I don't know that you had carbon credits to sell? I go to an exchange and I find it. Okay. You will have taken your carbon credits. You, what if you didn't know that Maua was in the business of buying and so you put your carbon credits up on the exchange and then I go to the exchange and I see what is the offer price. So that's okay. the other place where I can discover a price. Is there an offer told by the seller? Is the offer told um, by the seller? Okay. It's the offer given by the buyer? Um, okay. whatever settles is an agreement between the buyer and seller to buy and sell. Yeah. So somewhere in there, in some regulated systems, governments have in the past set a floor price. So some governments have in the past said, you can only buy, you, you're, you're welcome to buy from me, but I have a floor price and you have to transact above that floor price. And so price setting is done through many mechanisms through open discovery, through setting a floor, setting a cap, doing an auction, just doing a trade in the open market. So okay. a number of methods, but they're a function of primarily a function of need. How desperately do you how want to buy? Okay, nice. How much you have emitted and how desperately are not, now you have to buy that. Okay, got it. Is there any quality regulations of these carbon credits? Is there a good carbon credit, bad carbon credit or a best carbon credit? Like we have it for Hallmark for gold. Yeah. So that is a, um, it's a hot potato question. Okay. We have two sorts of carbon markets today as we function. Okay. We have those that are in a closed system, meaning um, there is a cap and it's either a country or a group of countries like the European Union, for example. They have a closed system. All of them have, are within that system. It is law and it's normal regulation. There, It's a way of normally doing business. So in that system, 
uh, rules and regulations are given. Something qualifies, something doesn't qualify. It's only a function of price thereafter. Then you have another system, which is let's it's called a baseline and credit system, where remember I said you could buy credits from outside. So okay. countries that were not ready to take a cap uh, are able to sell carbon credits because they're doing things differently. And because of that, their project then qualifies by different schemes. They submit their proposals to sell their credits into these, these systems. Most of the quality discussions out there have been to do with this baseline and credit system. Okay. These are projects usually, and they're usually projects um, that are located outside the, a cap system uh, or a capped or a compliance based regulatory system. They sit in what people loosely call the voluntary carbon market. Yes. There's everything voluntary about it, but today there's nothing voluntary about it. This voluntary system, the word was born back in the days of the Kyoto Protocol where companies then started saying, I voluntarily take on greenhouse gas targets and I want to transact that outside the Kyoto system okay. because some asset classes were not eligible back then. So this was, is like, uh, for an explanation, this is like an IT company who does not emit sort, sort of CO2s but is willing to negate whatever is happening to the working of computers and all that but still willingly, voluntarily taking that credits to yeah, Nigeria. it is not just an IT company. It's yeah. an American coal company. Okay. In the US, that American coal company has no legal obligations to reduce emissions. But sure. together with its shareholders and its management, decide that we, we really should move towards lower carbon technologies. And, one, and the way to do it through the company is to have a target. Sure. So it's not just IT companies that don't emit that much. It's even people that emit. So it just depends on the jurisdiction. where. Okay. Uh, so these are all... Um, the, at the end of the day, they're, they're people. Yes. So they say that we as an organism take it seriously. So there's everything voluntary in the sense it's not a compliance. It's not like Indian laws and regulations tell you to do it, but your company has decided to take it seriously. So it's voluntary in that sense. But it's also not voluntary because the company has agreed with it with the shareholders. And it has gone public with it. So it really has to take it seriously. Yeah. And therefore, it's nothing really voluntary about it. So. The quality discussion that is out there is coming from this so-called voluntary carbon market, which actually is a really small portion of the total carbon market. It's all of two and a half billion dollars, maximum three. So it's very, very, very small. And a lot of the unfortunate criticism of it has been around people's, anything between people's perception to actual rigging, to actual fraud, to differences of opinion, to no real regulator. One more thing, what is climate finance for our users? It started by money for climate change activities. That was the original understanding. Is that from the developed country to the developing nations? Then it became that. Okay. It became, it became uh, cash flows from the developed world to the developing world. But it didn't start like that. It started as money for green for green things for climate change so nice. literally as the word, as the phrase says climate finance it then became that okay. that developing countries said look uh, you're the you're the guys that created uh, yeah. this uh, global warming problem i still have a lot to develop which of course they do so you pay me and that became this climate finance uh, understanding today in the largely in the un system it's payment to them for their transition to more greener. For their side. transition to greener is the okay. is the current prevailing understanding, and that it's sometimes often understood further as free money, meaning grant money. Okay, it's not loans but grants. It could be concessional and so on and other other things, but it's really financial flows. It's you know that's the sort of the angle it has assumed over the years.